Praise the Lord. Ooh. <sighs> um, two scriptures we have to deal with this to help you out, help us all out. It made a difference to me in my life. Um, first John 1 9. First John 1 9. And um, Romans chapter 8. Woo! We'll deal with this and then we'll get into whatever we're going to get into. <laughs> Praise the Lord. I think um, just over life, we, we make church, God, the Bible, all that stuff uh, more religious. And as a result, it's not as effective. It doesn't work the way it's supposed to, the way God originally intended it. So <clears throat> thank God for the real people, real results, real Jesus revelation, because it has completely changed my personal life um, from what it, what a shameful existence to uh, um, something to be okay with. Amen. Yeah, First John, First John, um, chapter one, verse nine. If we confess our sins, confessing means admit it. Yeah, be, just own it. I screwed up. Quit pretending. That's what a real purpose person is. Not a person who's looking at it a hardship and is like, oh, no, it's not my fault. It's not. It's because of this. Don't make excuses. Right? We're not trying to make excuses in this place. We're trying to make results. Amen. Amen. So if we confess our sins, own it, admit it. God, that's the, that's the he in that verse. God is faithful and God is just to forgive us our sins. It's pending what? The forgiveness is for what? It's pending on, in other words, it's there, it's waiting, but what's it waiting on? For me to own it. Quit pretending, right? It's her fault, it's his fault, it's their fault, it's the government's fault, it's the, who else's fault do we have on our list? And my dad's fault, that's right. It's my mom's fault. Who else's fault? My whole family. My whole family, every single one of them. From the tallest to the shortest to everybody in between. The one that's not even born, his fault, I swear. Right? It's my brother's fault. It's my sister's fault. It's the economy's fault. This verse doesn't apply to the one who's making excuses. It applies to the one who just admits it. I blew it. I really blew it. Lord, if we confess our sins, if we admit it, own it, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from how much what do you consider unrighteous we just say anything that we think is not god's will according to that verse it's not god it's not us who has to feel um forgiven it's on god's part that his dedication and commitment to do what he said as long as i did my part my part in this verse is own it admit it his part in this verse is cleansing me from all unrighteousness, all of it. So let's say God did cleanse a person from all unrighteousness. And we walked in the room and we remember all the trash that they did. So our voices should be stronger than God's when we judge them. Or should God's voice be, it should overrule everybody's. You see what I mean? Watch. God's voice has to overrule your own guilt. That you won't let it go. Amen? It's one of those, it's the craziest dynamics, the way God does things. Um, for humans, like we need to pay those people back. For God's sake, for God's, on God's side, you need to forgive them. Because the best of a human is a clean human, a clean human that's been cleaned from the guilt, from the condemnation. So who's faithful and just to forgive us our sins? God, go to Romans chapter eight. <sighs> Do a little personal encouragement slash counseling before we get into the message. <laughs> I'll say that, but God be like, Psh, this is the message. I find you're the boss. I just work here. Romans chapter eight, verse one, there is therefore now no condemnation to them that are in the anointing of Christ Jesus who walk not after the flesh, but after the, okay. So let's define the spirit according to John, first John one, nine. Um, I'm the human cause that I'm confessing my sin. And God is the spirit that's faithful and just to forgive me of my sins and to cleanse me from all unrighteousness. 
So according to verse one of Romans chapter eight, there is therefore now no con no condemning. So in a legal um, setting, somebody comes, um, there's a complaint against someone else. Maybe I, I committed a crime and I'm standing for the judge and the judge has mercy, grace, or whatever. So instead of sending me somewhere, he mercies me. And then I have to maybe pay back retribution or something like that, right? Restitution. So maybe make payments for whatever the case may be. Point being, <clears throat> If I get judged against it and sent me, and if the judgment is against me and I get sent to prison, I've been condemned. In that condemnation, think about what's happening when a person is in jail, they are limited. All their freedoms are gone, being controlled. When you eat, when you get up, so on and so forth. So condemnation, you, you might feel like this person needs to be feel, they need to feel guilty, but think about it from that perspective. They need to lose their freedoms, their hopes, their dreams. They're no longer gonna, they no longer get a chance to pursue life. So you're trying to judge that onto a, onto a person to condemn them as though they were being put into a prison and you're supposed to be the judge. Cause you gotta remember that the next time you screw something up and you need that mercy. Amen. We mercy cause God mercies. We grace because God's graces. Amen. Yeah. He could have said something that hurt your feelings really bad. You said something too. She may have said something that really, Ooh, cut you deep. You've said something too. Yes. It takes practice. But recognize if you want to maintain your freedom, do not sow the seed of condemnation to someone else. That way you stay as free to pursue your hopes and dreams and that nothing is limiting you, a cell block as it were. Amen? So, verse 1, Romans 8, Therefore is the known condemnation of them that are in Christ Jesus, who walk not after the, the flesh is the one that condemns, not God, but after the spirit. Spirit is the one that delivers forgives mercies and grace so there's a part of me that wants to get you and then there's a part of me that's like you know what forget about it it's not even worth my time amen so look at it from that perspective the next time your feelings get hurt you got to dig deep into your into who you are in christ jesus because as long as i'm in christ jesus i have no condemnation watch if i have no condemnation i got nothing to give to you in terms of condemnation get it if i got money i can give you money if i got guilt I can give you guilt. I got a lot of guilt. I can give you all day. If I got condemnation, I can give you condemnation. But what if I have none? It's hard to condemn when I have no condemnation. Amen? Simple enough. Let's give God a hand for enough, taking the time. Sure. First Peter. Let's go to First Peter. This is the, um, the scripture today um, I feel being led to. Um, at least I was meditating on it this morning um, when I woke up, but the, when I got to the back there, it was being confirmed. Um, let's read a little bit. Verse 18. This is um, 1 Peter chapter 1. We'll start at verse 17. This is 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 17. And if you call on the Father, who without respect of persons judges according to every man's work, pass the time of your sojourning here in fear. For as much as you know that you were not redeemed with corruptible things, like silver, gold, from your vein, conversation there means conduct, the way you lived. Received by tradition from your fathers, but you were redeemed with the precious blood of Christ as a, of a lamb without blemish and without spot. Verse 20, who verily was foreordained before the foundation of the world, but was manifest in these last times for you, who by him do believe in God that raised him up from the dead and gave him glory, that your faith and hope might be in God. Verse 22, seeing you have purified your souls in obeying the truth from the spirit, through the spirit, unto unfeigned love of the brethren. It's not fake, it's real. See that you love one another with a pure heart fervently. Uh, fervently, another way to say fervently is like with intensity. Verse 23, being born again, this is, this is our verse right here, not of corruptible seed, but of incorruptible, referring to seed, and the seed he explains by the, so the word of God is seed. 
being born again of the seed, which lives and abides forever. It's a seed that never gets corrupted. It's a seed that doesn't get rotten. It, so let's say when we approach the word of God, what we don't want to do is look at it from a religious perspective. But we look at it from not as it's not a book of rules that we have to follow. But let's say it's a book of seed that we sow to grow on purpose, a particular plant. If it's got apple seeds and I want apples, I take seeds out of there, plant so I can get. If it's got orange, if it's got mango, if it's got whatever kind of fruit kind of tree or nuts that I like and those seeds are inside of that book, I take those seeds out and I plant them on purpose so that I can get the result that it promises. If the promise is an apple tree, I take the seeds out, plant them so that I can get an apple tree on purpose. Okay? All right. Let's look at a seed packet in John chapter 10, verse 10. Watch, when you religiousize it, it's why you feel guilty. Condemnation is possible because of religion. The, the rules, the book of rules that none of us can follow anyways perfectly. We can go really good. Oh man, do it really, really good. And then one day in the week, boom, blow it. It's not, it was never designed as a book of rules. We have turned it into rules and now we use the rules to judge whether each other's making the great, oh yeah, you really screwed that up, man. Sinner. If it was a book of rules, then why die for us? You know what I mean? Why, why does Jesus Christ come and die on the cross if we're supposed to follow the rules? It's by dying on the cross, it proved that we couldn't. Amen. As long as you have rules, you have a standard, if you will. And I'm not saying just do whatever, because as long as you grow that apple seed, whatever the seed is, it will become a tree. And then that it, it, it's hard to escape that it's an apple tree. So in the same way, if it's a forgiveness tree, a mercy tree, a grace tree, a love tree, you guys get it? So we're trying to grow this on purpose because Jesus said in Mark 4, if you don't understand how this principle works, you're not going to understand anything in life. You don't just become this perfect person. You grow this person from the inside out. And we're not trying to grow it for somebody else. We're trying to grow us. Amen. Uh, where did I say go? Oh, yeah, John. <laughs> John chapter 10. What are we doing? Come on. John, John 10. We just read in 1 Peter. What was it? 1 Peter chapter 1. That Let's look at the scripture as a book of seeds. Okay. <clears throat> Forgive me. Let's go to Mark 4. Why well, I heard you. I just didn't jump on it. Mark chapter 4. Yeah, it makes perfect sense. Perfect sense. <clears throat> We're going to read this, 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 this thing this morning, right? Mark chapter 4, verse 1. He began to teach by the seaside. There was gathered to him a great multitude, so that the, he entered into a ship and sat in the sea, and the whole multitude was by the sea on the land. He taught them many things by parables and said to them in his doctrine, Hearken, behold, there went out a sower to sow. It came to pass as he sowed, this sower, the guy that's planting the seeds, some of his seed fell by the wayside. Some of his seeds uh, and the fowls of the air came and devoured it up because they're sitting on right on the ground. Verse five. And some of his seed fell on stony ground where the seed had not much earth. And immediately that seed sprung up because it had no depth of earth. But when the sun was up, that seed was scorched. And because it had no root, it withered away. And some of the seed fell among thorns and the thorns, thorny ground grew up choked the seed and the seed yielded no fruit but other seed fell on good ground and it, that seed yielded fruit sprang up increased and brought some brought forth some 30 60 and what i call maximum results some hundredfold and he said to them he that has ears please pay attention to this truth verse 10 
When he was alone, they that were about him with the twelve asked of him the parable, verse 11 says. He said unto them, unto you it is given to know the mystery or the secrets, the insight, the revelation, the hidden truths behind the text of the kingdom of God, how God rules, how God dominates, how God maintains power. Unto, but unto them that are outside, the people who are not as hungry, not as thirsty, they're not seeking, if you will, and they're not knocking and they're not asking. All these things are done in parables in order so that even though they see, they're not going to get it. Even though they hear, they still don't understand it. Lest at any time they should be changed from who they are to who they can be. But to you, he said, I'm going to explain it so that who you used to be can become who you can be. All the hopes, instead of maintaining hopes, dreams, things that I want to do, all your future desires and wants, instead of staying in that it's not here yet category, it moves you, there it is. Now I'm wearing it, now I'm driving it, now I'm enjoying it, now I'm living it, now I'm fulfilled, now I'm happy, now I'm so on and so forth. Everything that God promised, we'll call them a bag of seeds, book of seeds, right? Verse 13, and he said to them, don't you understand this parable? This metaphor, as it were, this analogy. And how then will you understand all parables? So apparently the seed parable is the secret to all parables. The seed secret is the answer to all secrets. The seed understanding, the seed wisdom, the seed insight, perception, view and or perspective is how you understand everything in life. You don't just become somebody, you grow into that person. You don't just have a business, you grow that business. You don't just have a family out of nowhere, you grow it. So if the family goes to a point where it's a terrible family, somebody grew that on purpose. Whether you were paying attention or not, and we don't end up, we arrive or we are fully matured as a result of the seed time in the harvest principle. All right. So if you want tomorrow to be different from what you have today, what do you do? Sow different seeds. It's not rocket science anymore. And it straight up ain't religion. On purpose. You don't get to where you are financially today because it was just an accident. You grew that. We can grow poverty just like we can grow wealth. We can grow lack and insufficiency like we can grow, like we can grow abundance, increase. Amen. You can grow condemnation like you can grow freedom. You can grow limits like you can grow unlimitedness. So we're no longer complaining about why is this happening to me? You grew it. Change your seeds, change your harvest. Look at somebody saying, this ain't rocket science, man. I swear, we put a religious twist on this. It messes it all up. The common sense is gone. And in case for the, if you're watching online or maybe you haven't heard it, common sense is the, the bedrock upon which wisdom's foundation sits. So it's not like it's something different from wisdom. It's part of it. Amen. You guys heard the set saying, right? Common sense is not so common. Yeah, we got a lot of academic people in, in life, especially in the government. We, they ain't got no wisdom. Watch, verse 13. How will you know all parables if you don't get this one? Verse 14. Here's the parable. The sower sows the word. And these are they by the wayside. This is the kind of human being that is the wayside. So what he's referring to is the heart of a human being is this, the ground and the words that the human being hears are the seeds. Amen. So change the seeds, you change the harvest, but the ground is still the same. The ground, say me, will produce abundance or lack. The ground, say me, will produce condemnation or freedom. Hmm? The ground, say me, will produce abundance in life or lack in life. Hardships, difficulties, challenges, being stuck in life. It's not because God decided just to skip over you. It's because you're not sowing the right seeds. You want the right harvest, sow the right seeds. Don't complain about it. Don't blame him, her, them, and everybody else. And all our long, everybody on our long list we went over. Jesus is Lord. That's a long list, man. <laughs> Whatever you do, don't be real and say, okay, it was my fault. 
<clears throat> These are they, verse 15, <clears throat> by, the way, by the wayside where the word is sown. And when they have heard, Satan comes immediately and takes away the word that was sown. What's the wayside? You got a road, right? What's that road back in the day called, was called a way. What's the side of the way? The curb. What's the curb mean? It's the gutter. So when the word is sown into a heart that is a wayside kind of heart, how does that heart treat the word? Like trash. Like trash. In other words, the word is just a bunch of religious crap. I don't want to hear it. It's not a bag of seeds, not realizing that those same words is what my body's molecules that were made from when God said, let's make man just like us. So if it's not important, what's it look like when I think the word is not important? Okay, I don't want to hear it. All right, that's fine. All right. What is my lifestyle on Sunday? You see, you understand? We're not, nobody wants us to just say, no, the Bible is not very important to me at all. We're never going to say that. But our lifestyles will show what, how important it is or how not important it is. Hmm? Man, um, we're all having a hard time, man. What am I going to do? You need to tithe. What's that got to do with anything? This is what the Word said. We're not taking the Word to try to put a rules into you, but sowing seed into me so that the seed grows and produces what the tithe, if you will, is one of those things. That's one of those uh, seeds, right? We're not dealing with religion right now. We're not dealing with the Holy Word of God right now in its traditional form. We're dealing with it from this perspective, that the word of God is seed. The human being is the ground. And if you get out of the word of God a particular seed, sow it into that ground, that ground, there's a certain ground that produces that particular promise. So if the Bible is full of promises or seeds, and if it's got apple seeds in there and we want to grow an apple tree, we keep sowing the seed, water the seed, it's guaranteed to get an apple tree. You guys understand that? Verse 16, these are they likewise, which are sown on stony ground, who, when they have heard the word, immediately receive it with gladness. Woohoo! I love it. Have no root in themselves. Don't allow it to adjust inside of them. What's that, what's that mean? The word got me. He said it was dealing directly with something I was dealing with. <sighs> it's not that big a deal. It was, oh man, it was a good message. And then when the opportunity comes to make an adjustment, like say for, say for example, the seeds we're sowing this morning, just, just as an example, was forgiveness. All right? <clears throat> this is a stony ground guy. He's excited. But when you get home and somebody says something mean to you, what do you do? I forgive them in Jesus' name. <laughs> okay, let's just say you did forgive them, right? then you're not the stony ground. You allow the seed. That's where, that's how you don't have root in themselves, meaning allowing that word to change you. This is how it changes. I hear forgiveness. I hear mercy. I, see, I hear grace. And I've been, I've been really struggling with that lately. And then God keeps telling me, this is how you break through. This is how you break out. We don't avoid the issue. We handle it, deal with it face on, and then we control it because we're supposed to be in charge of our own lives, not being pushed around by people's opinions. So <clears throat> he tells me, Mercy, grace, and forgiveness. All right. I run into somebody. She says something. Ooh, he said something. They said whatever. And then, whew, thank you, Lord God. You forgave me. I got to forgive them. Right? Did you notice that your pride has to be removed in order to? Watch. And that's how you win. I thought if we win, it's just smack him in the eye and then he'll have a black eye. And then I won. <clears throat> that's how you won the fight that's how you lost the seed hmm? so what future do you have now if you killed the seed uh, I didn't see it like that man I just didn't see it like that so we're not dealing with it from a religious perspective because we're fearing eternal damnation we're dealing with results we want results and we want them now I'm tired of waiting man and we never have to wait on God. We never have to work. You come here, you get seed that's direct. It's, it's deep, it's strong, and it's extremely effective. All we're waiting on is us. 
Little adjustment, yeah? Verse 16, these are they likewise sown on stony ground, who when they have heard the word immediately receive it with gladness, have no root in themselves, so endure for, but for a little bit. I forgave once, that's enough. <laughs> Afterward, when affliction or persecution, watch, arises for what sake? Not your sake, not God's sake. For if the seed is supposed to produce the harvest, what is the devil going after? Your results. The harvest is the result, the outcome, the change, the proof that what I'm doing works. Amen. Works for me, not against me. I'm going to be more specific, right? Immediately they are offended. And these are they which are sown among thorns, such as hear the word, cares of this world, deceitfulness of riches. This is that one trap where we get and we say, Lord, we need a break. And then all of a sudden I get that job, I get that business, I get some kind of in income increase, right? And then the increase now the, of all the things that are happening are the results. But then the results start choking the seed that grew the results. So we start blowing off the seed in the water that comes from that, that where the seed came from. So we can handle all the things, all the business, all the, all the work, all the hours now that I have to put in because the job has become so significant. It happens to everybody, man. It just does. But it's the point where we're not trying to get to the from the wayside just so we can get to the stony, just so we can get to the thorny and then die out. Thank God we're busy. Thank God we got more work. Thank God we, uh, the job is expanding and so on and so forth. But the source didn't come from the job. It came from the seed. Take care of the tree. And the God of increase will take care of the hours so that you can make it in to keep getting seed, keep getting water. So we can start where we're believing for a better job. This is just so plain and so simple. Then we get the job, but then the job says you can't go to church on Sunday. You can't go to church on Wednesday. What's the point? Think about it from the devil's perspective. What is he trying to do? Cut off the source. Because then all of a sudden now I'm a slave to the job. Now they want me to do this. Now they want me to do this. And even though it looks like a promotion, you know, I'm, I'm losing my connection with God. And as a result, I'm losing the connection of the seed, the water, and the changes. So now the changes are not a result of me. Now I'm the slave to the changes. Don't let the devil trap you like that. And if he does, we'll talk, get you encouraged, straighten out. Folks, life was not supposed to happen to you so that life grows in such a degree that you have to chase it to maintain it. It's going to be a rough thing to to get to, to, to receive, depending on where you are um, in, your, in your heart and your mind right now, in your spirit. You can get anything you want, period. Perfect hours, perfect boss, perfect business, perfect pay, perfect benefits, every single thing. You don't have to be a slave to get it. You so get it. Don't give up on what you're learning because the busyness of life. <sighs> if you can handle it, you can grow in your income to such a degree that somebody else washes your house and you pay them to do it. We call it cleaning service. Somebody else does the lawn for you. Somebody else does the pool for you. You don't have to do that. Oh, I can't do that because I got to go fix this. Send it to the mechanic. Think about it. As when we grow to that point, you are now not just a person who has been distributed to. You become a distribu distribution center for other people and their work and their livelihood. Mechanic needs work. Right? You don't need to stay up till 10.30 at night trying to figure out what's wrong with the hood, under the hood. Send it to somebody who does it for a living. Help to pay them because you've increased. You understand what I'm saying? Quit thinking so small, watch, and then minimizing the possibility of what is possible when you sold that kind of tree. Folks, we, we know you grow an apple tree. How many apples are on that tree? We, we keep thinking like, oh, if I could get one apple. The tree is designed to produce thousands and millions over its lifetime of apples. And because the seeds are in each apple, six, seven, eight, nine of them, billions. Mm. 
and have no root in themselves, and so endure but for a time afterward the infliction of, well, forgive me, we're at verse 19. And the cares of this world and the deceitfulness of riches, if I could just do this and make more money. How about sow this and get more money? Sow some love, sow some mercy, sow some faithfulness, sow some dedication, sow some commitment, <clears throat> sow some faith in God, trust, if you will. And the cares of this world, deceitfulness of riches, and the lust of other things, pressures, entering in, into where? Into the human being. That's where the seed is. Chokes the word. What's the word? That's the seed. And it becomes unfruitful. The word, the seed becomes unfruitful. And these are they which are sown on good ground, such as hear the word, receive the word, bring forth some, they bring forth fruit, results, some 30 times, some 60 times, some maximum. Interesting, the very next verse. And he said to them, is a candle brought to be put under a bushel or under a bed and not to be set on a candle stick? There is nothing that's hidden which shall not be manifested. We will know exactly where you are. You will know exactly where you are by how it works in your life. Is it working? No. We know what seeds you're sowing. It's not rocket science anymore, man. Right? If, 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 if I'm broke, I've been sowing no seeds. It's not the right job, the wrong job, the better job, the worst job. It's the kind of person that I am. That's what draws the kind of life that I live. I change me, I change everything. Period. Your life's not happening to you, it's happening because of you. Whether you like the life or not, it is happening because of you. We change you so that you, the life that you don't like, we change you, you get a life that you really like. Amen? John 10, 10. It's really neat because I'm really dizzy right now. But I, I like I could walk straight. It's a trip. It's the only kind of drunk I can get and still drive a car. <laughs> what do you tell them? It's like, these men are drunk. You go, no, they're not as drunk as you suppose. Anyways, it's, it's a story in the Bible. Verse 10. This, verse 10 is a seed. The thief comes not but for to steal, kill, and to destroy. What seed is he sowing? Death. Death and destruction. Yeah, I am come that you might have life and that you might have it more. We keep thinking that God is going to come and go, bling, your life is perfect. Ooh, I don't like you. Your, your life's going to suck. Bling, your life is perfect. It's not like that. He's bringing seed. This verse is seed. And we can tell who's been most effective at sowing seed, the thief or God. Right? Well, this is what I love about it. My door is closed to the death and destruction seed. My door is open to the life and more abundantly seed. See that? So you close and you open. It's up to you what kind of seed is sown so that you determine what kind of tree uh, grows up. All right? Let's look at the, at the tithe. Uh, Malachi real quick. Malachi. We're just going through seed, right? We're not going through rules. We're not going through a bunch of rules that we can't follow in the Bible. We read in 1 Peter that we were born again of incorruptible seed, right? Which means the word, even by the word of God, the word of God is seed. As a matter of fact, let me, let me show you something real quick. Ephesians chapter 5. Uh, Ephesians, this way, what are you talking about, man? Ephesians chapter 5. <clears throat> I want you to see something. We saw in 1 Peter that the word of God is seed, right? Check this out. This is verse, <clears throat> excuse me, 25. This is Ephesians chapter 5, verse 25. <sighs> Husbands, love your wives even as Christ also loved the church, gave himself for it, that he might sanctify, set it apart, 
and cleanse it with the washing of water by the so the word of God is also referred to as word as water. So the word sows, the word waters, the word grows. Amen. Now go back over to Malachi. It's why the constant exposure and my constant openness to the scripture produces results. The more I'm open to it, the more I'm cooperative with it, the more I allow the seed to grow the way it's supposed to grow. That's why some people get more results than others. Some people are more cooperative with the seed than others. That's the only difference, you guys. Not because somebody's more blessed than others. We all got the same blessing. Just like the devil wants to curse us all the same. God blesses us all the same. Gave us the same cross, same blood, same salvation, same forgiveness, same mercy, same grace, same wisdom, same Bible. That's why he said, whosoever has ears to hear, oh God in heaven, please hear. He said, whosoever, that means anybody. This is Malachi, we're dealing with seed. Come on, say it, we're dealing with seed. All right, verse 10. Bring ye all the tithes into the storehouse that there may be meat in my house and prove me now herewith, says the Lord. I'm going to say something a little bit strong. Your dime of every dollar connects to revelation. Look at the wording in that scripture. Bring ye all the tithes into the, my house that there may be, that there may be food or meat, referring to revelation, wisdom, knowledge, understanding. My tithe connects me directly to the revelation. It's the super seed. Not just another sermon. The effectiveness of this seed to produce results. Amen. It's like miracle grow. It's all good. Jesus Christ does miracles. Ah, bring all the tithes into the storehouse and there may be meat in my house. And prove me now here with prove me is like uh, test me. But I'll prove to you is a better way to put it. Put it. Herewith says the Lord of hosts, if I will not open you the windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing, that there shall not be room enough to receive it. Interestingly enough, look at those words right there. Windows of heaven, pour you out a blessing that, see the there shall, see the italicized, italics? That means that we're, they were not in the original text. That the translators put those words in there because they think that's what he was trying to say. So it, actually this verse Look at the next words that are italicized. Be room. And then the three words to receive it. So the actual words, when it finishes that sentence, is saying, if I will not open you of the windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing, that not enough. In other words, that's not enough. Pouring it out is not enough. Because I got to rebuke the devourer for your sake. Because even though the rains are pouring out, even though God's wisdom is pouring out, the devil is there to steal the seed. To corrupt it, if you will, not because God's word can be corrupted, but corrupted in the way we perceive it. Here's a here's an easy way to corrupt the seed. We start talking about tithes, and what does a person start thinking? It's about the money. And the devil got in there, twisted it. Now the seed is not going to produce the way God intended. It will produce the wrong seed. See that? So there's a lot of different things that we can talk about the Bible. And if you take it wrong or if, if, if you're offended by it in some way, maybe I said it in a way that it's more offensive to you than I wish you would have just said it this way. That's like going, that's like the doctor telling the cancer patient as nicely as possible, we got to cut this out or you're going to die. Well, I wish you would have said it in a different way. What do you, how do you want me to tell you you're going to die? I'm not saying anybody's going to die. I'm saying God is, um, sometimes is a little blunt. I trust this. He chose me on purpose, knowing my personality. Knowing my personality, it, it seems to me that he understood it and still poured out the revelation through which he wants to demonstrate his will. So it's one of those things where I'm not as quick to tend to your feelings as much as tend to your problems. I'm quicker to solve and bring solutions, but I'm learning how to be a little bit more, I want to say politically correct, but I don't like that term. So I'll just say, um, be more effective communicator. Verse 10, this is seed, bring ye all the tithes in the storehouse, maybe meet in my house, prove me now herewith, says the Lord of hosts. Remember what the Lord of hosts means, right? This is the military part of God. 
The Lord of hosts is a title specific to the military arm, the military attitude of God, right? You have the politicians that will, in, in government, that will negotiate back and forth with ambassadors from other countries and everybody just does their political back and forth. But once the military has been engaged, there's all the questions have been answered or um, all the negotiations have, have, have um, whether they failed or not, but it's time now to just force the will of that, that military power over the other military power. So when that military part of power, part of God shows up, it's time to force things into your will. All right. <clears throat> We're so used to hearing it. We don't realize how heavy what I just said. Praise the Lord, says the Lord of armies. If I will not open you in the winds of heaven and pour you out a blessing, but that's not enough. Why? I still have to rebuke the devourer for your sake, for your sakes. Stop no more. Rebuke. What's stop no more coming from a military army? Do not step past that line. You will blow up. <laughs> you have to understand what it's saying. When the devil rebukes, when God rebukes the devil, the devourer, devourer, I like the, I like the title that he puts right there. You can build up a nest egg and it'll be devoured by what? Pick a thing. All of a sudden now there's a sickness. All of a sudden now there's hospital bills. All of a sudden now these people need help, that people need help. It's like, and then you're thinking like, oh, my nest egg, wait, 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 wait. It cannot be devoured as a tither because now my bank account is protected. My money is protected. It's protected in such a way that your dollar will buy this much, my dollar will buy this much. Stopping the devil. Folks, lack and insufficiency did not enter the world of human beings until after Adam and Eve cooperated with the devil. When Jesus showed up as the last Adam and cooperated with God, it eliminated the ability of the devil to infect you on purpose every single time guaranteed. It didn't stop him from infecting people, but it gave us the ability to walk away from that infection so that I can choose not to be cursed. Whereas before you were cursed, whether you were, whether you liked it or not, you had to find it out, find a way, so on and so forth. Now we have access to the blessing of God, the empowerment to prosper a seed that I can grow so that everything I touch works. I know, give God a hand, praise our Lord somebody. Right? That made me so dizzy. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord. I'll be rebuked and devoured for your sake, and he will not destroy the fruits of your ground. What's fruits mean? My results. The seed that I've been sowing will always come to pass as a tither. Here's the devil twist me up. Oh, man, he just want the money. He doesn't even need the money. No, I don't need the money. I need, the I need my tithe because I, I want the devourer to be rebuked in my life like you want the devourer to be rebuked in your life. Don't make it about, don't let the devil twist it into money. When we, we clearly see it is, look at what he says in verse 10. Bring all the tithes in the storehouse that there may be meat in. This is verse 10. Bring you all the tithes into the storehouse, referring to the church, the ministry, one that you get fed in, that there may be meat in that house. So apparently the tithe provides something for God's house. And prove me now in this, right? <clears throat> So if God gets a benefit because I bring the tithe, that means it's a partnership. Amen. I will rebuke the devourer for your sake, and he will not destroy the fruit of your ground, neither shall your vine cast her fruit before the time in the field, says the Lord of hosts. You're not going to get premature stuff. In other words, it almost gets there and then uh, doesn't make it. Some of those uh, results that we, oh, this looks like it's going to work out, and then it doesn't work out. That's not supposed to happen. Amen. It's not supposed to happen. And I'll admit it, the first time it happened, I got mad at God. I burned them. I don't know if I burned it. I remember ripping the pages and throwing it in the trash. I'm telling everybody, this is fake. Wah. <laughs> I threw my little fit. And then probably in the next two days, I felt so bad. He didn't even say nothing. Didn't be like, didn't no lightning bolts, you know, electricity didn't get turned off. I mean, nothing happened. I mean, I just remember feeling so bad. It's like, oh my gosh, in heaven, the first test you got and he blew it. Ugh. And I apologize. And me and God, we've been good ever since. I, I, we made up, praise the Lord. 
Verse 11, and I will rebuke the devourer for your sake. He will just not destroy the fruit of your ground, neither shall your vine cast her fruit before the time in the field, says the Lord of When the Lord of hosts is saying it, it's a guarantee, you guys. Amen. Let's go to 1 Peter 2.24. Okay, 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 okay. Uh, verse 24, 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 24. Who his own self bear our sins in his own body on the tree, Jesus Christ, the tree referring to the cross, that we, being dead to sin, should live unto by whose stripes you were healed. Romans chapter 8. You were past, present, and future. Sowing seeds. Sowing seeds. Amen. Verse 28. This is Romans chapter 8. Verse 28. We know that all things, how many things? Everything works together collectively for my good or to good to them that love God, to them who are called according to his purpose. John chapter 16. John chapter 14, forgive me. I want you to compare that to Romans 8.28. Romans 8.28 says all things work together for, to the, for the good of them who love God. And then we define those who love God in John chapter 14. Mm -hmm. John chapter 14. Matthew, Mark, Luke, John chapter 14, verse 15. And it says... If you love me, keep my commandments. Let's apply this to 2022 for right now based on the seed. Keep my commandments means follow the instruction. If the seed says forgive, follow the instruction of the seed so that you can get forgiveness. If the seed says wealth, follow the instruction for wealth so that, so that you get the wealth. Now it doesn't, it doesn't in plain text, but it's very, it's very obvious. In Malachi, we just read it. Bring ye all the tithes in the storehouse, maybe meet in my house, and prove me now in this. Says the Lord of hosts, not pouring out window of heaven. Open up the windows of heaven and pour out your blessings. To such a degree, there's not a room enough to receive it, right? Not enough. Verse. And in the following verse, he says, <clears throat> And I will rebuke the devourer for your sake, and he will not destroy the fruits. What's fruits mean? All right, he's not talking about one or two or three. This is the plant, the farmer who farms the rest of his life. Every single tree produces, period. So if every seed that I sow produces a tree that's guaranteed to produce fruit, wealth is guaranteed by the tithe. Amen. Psalm 91. There's one we haven't seen in a bit, huh? Oh, Jesus, Lord, Lord, Jesus, Jesus, Lord. I love this. It, it, to me, it's so plain, but you'll see it. It's, it's pretty obvious. It's pretty obvious. Whatever you do, folks, don't, don't religiousize um, this stuff. It's, it's, it's what killed us. Most of us have, could spell God and Jesus, kind of had a basic understanding most of our lives about Jesus Christ, but we've never met him like this before, right? Um, being exposed to CC Live, Covenant Church Live, you've never heard this flavor of Jesus before. And as a result, look at the changes that you've experienced as a result of meeting him in this way. If I've known God for all this time and I still haven't seen the results that I've seen since I met him this way, what in the world was the issue? There's a lot more religion in the air than you realize. So a place like this is a huge threat. It's a huge threat to the devil. The last thing he wants to do is get a bunch of people getting changes. Amen. 
Psalm 91. He that dwells in the secret place. What's the secret place? These mysteries. To you it is given to know the mysteries of the kingdom of God. He's referring to revelation. The meat that's in my house. The revelation, the truth of my house. Yes, it does on the natural level. Um, there is food that can be put in as food banks that the church can provide to the community. But there's revelation that's more important than the physical food. Amen. Because the food comes and it goes. Revelation it is the source of all things. He that dwells in a secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. What's that mean? You're constantly covered by God. Psalm 91 verse 2. I will say of the Lord, he is my refuge, my fortress, my God in him will I trust. Is it, is it a penetrable fortress if you're in the fortress that God built? Can't nobody get in? Are you kidding me? Jesus put it like this. He said, set your affection on things above where moth and rust don't corrupt and thieves can't break through and steal. <laughs> Verse three, surely he will deliver you from the snare of the fowler and from the noise and pestilence, whether it's something you see, whether you see something you can't see. He will cover you with his feathers underneath his wing, under his wings shall you trust. His truth will be your shield and your buckler. Um, long range battle, face to face battle. You shall not be afraid for the terror by night, nor for the arrow that flies by day, nor for the pestilence that walks in darkness, nor for the destruction that wastes at noonday. Whether it's an all out battle or whether it's disease, sickness or some kind of chemical attack. <laughs> it's a shame that believers in Christ Jesus, they believe in Christ Jesus, but they don't believe him to the point of the detail of your protection. A thousand at your side. I think it's in there actually. 10,000 in your right hand. Th oh yeah. Verse seven. A thousand shall fall at your side. 10,000 at your right hand. None of it will come near you. How do you say something like that, God? Because he introduced himself in verse one. He that dwells in the secret place of the, there's no higher than that, man. Only with your eyes will you behold and see the reward of the wicked because ye, you, I, we, have made God, the Lord, our refuge, even the most high, our habitation. We live there. How do we live there with God? Well, let's say he was the male and we were the female, the church, the bride of Christ. Let's take on that title for a minute for this example. And God's word is seed, his sperm in our spiritual womb. We have a piece of him always growing. We dwell there. We, this is our habitation. We live in this perspective. I have seed. I will give birth. And this birth will be something that I need, something that I want, a tree, if you will, a fruit, a, a result, an outcome, a happiness, a fulfillment. I'm going to get the job that I want. It pays me what I want with the right benefits and the hours that I want. Instead of settling for whatever gives to you, what is it, whatever the world would be so kind to, here you go, little peasant. You can guarantee the results. Now, you have to understand, since the devil is so accustomed to pushing us around, when you first push, he's not going to take you seriously. Just the way it is. You're going to have to prove your mettle, as it were. Where you push and you don't flex, period. When if all hell breaks loose, ain't got nothing to do with the decision that I already made. I will push until I see what I want. In Jesus' name. You see the, see the degree of, see, there's two different people right there. There's the one who tries it for a little bit and man, then he wants to push it and push it and push it, pow, something happens. Amen. That's just the difference. That's just the difference. It's not whether God bless one person and curse another person or, or ignores one, some people and, and, and really pays attention. Everything's available to everybody because this is seed. The same books, same verses, thousands of years. Amen. Because you have made the Lord, which is my refuge, even the most high your habitation, there shall no evil befall you, neither shall any plague come near your dwelling. 
For he shall give his angels charge over you to keep you in all of your ways. They shall bear you up in their hands, lest you dash your foot against the stone. That was that temp that's the verse that the devil tried to use against Jesus Christ in his temptation in the wilderness. Verse 13, you shall tread upon the lion and adder. Adder's a snake. It's um, apparently a very poisonous one among the top three in the world. But God is the most high, so who cares? If you're the number one poisoner, it doesn't matter. I serve the most high. That's higher than your number one. You shall tread upon the lion, the adder, the young lion, the dragon, shall you trample underfoot because you... Because I have set my love upon you, Lord God, therefore will, I, will God deliver him. I will set him on high because he has known my name. So I will translate that because this is God talking. God is saying, because Thomas, put your name in there, because has set your love upon God, therefore God will deliver you. God will set you on high because God, you have known God's name. That's why you can get the best job. Amen. <clears throat> and I'm not just talking about pay, I'm talking about position in the mind of the world when they look at you and go, hmm. Now, no freak out. People will get jealous. They'll be talking trash about you in the back, in your back. Nothing new, nothing big, no big deal. And then the next time you see him, you don't smack him that hard, a little bit, just kidding. <laughs> you say, hey, what's up? And then they act all weird and stuff, but you're all nice and kind. Why? Because you, God's rolling on you. He's rolling for you. Amen. It's it's kind of a wonderful thing to not have to uh, make, avoid people because you know they're they're stabbing you in the back with their mouth to other people and stuff. It's kind of it's it's neat because even if they're in a in like in a trouble with something heavy they can't pick up, you just roll up and you help them pick it up, and it's not that big a deal to you. It doesn't bother you any bit, and they're just thinking like, man, if this guy knew, I know. It's just that you don't control me. I'm helping because I'm helping. <sighs> Freedom is so. Tastes good. <laughs> I love it. Anyways, check this out. He will call upon me and I will answer him. Jesus is Lord. I will be with him in trouble. I will deliver him and I will honor him. <laughs> with a long life will God satisfy me and God will show me his salvation. It's powerful truths, powerful truths. We're sowing seeds, so that salvation, soteria, peace, preservation, soundness, promotion, supply, provision, breakthrough, deliverance, and all the other stuff it means. So these are the seeds that we sow. And then there, because the word is also water, we expose ourselves to these words constantly, right? So folks, that mentality of, oh, I got to go to church, get the seed. Get the water, grow the tree. Next project. Get the seed, get the water, grow the tree. There's the fruit. Boom, there goes my car. Boom, there goes my job. Boom, there goes my money. Boom, there goes my happiness. Boom, there goes my freedom. Boom, I am so fulfilled right now, I ran out of stuff again. All right, let's get some stuff for you now. All right, let's get some stuff for the church now. You guys understand what I'm saying? Comes to you, works for you. And eventually it goes through you. Amen. Give God a hand, stand to your feet if you would.